Hi, I'm Mike Hamilton. This is Newsjacker. Since the last time we talked, Black Hat and DEF CON happened. And uh, at uh, DEF CON, our director of offensive security did a talk. They're on identifying the signal left by penetration testers. So we're actually lucky as a managed security firm to have our own red team with those capabilities to come in and attack our SOC and do exactly that, right? Create signal that our analysts can observe and make refinements as necessary. So thanks, Jeremy, for going out to DEF CON and showing all our competitors how we do that. Uh, there was also a proposal for the Space Force. Uh, many are not understanding why, and many more are asking why not a cyber force, and I don't have an answer for that. Um, also in company news, briefly, um, we're now at over 50 employees, and so we had salespeople here last week from Boston, Denver, the Pacific Northwest, California, Texas. Um, there was a, a great couple of days of sales training, uh, a great party, a great after party, a great after after party, and I heard even an after 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 party, but I was asleep by then. Okay, first let's talk about security. Uh, again, at Black Hat, there was uh, another presentation on smart city technologies being absolutely riddled with security flaws with no real way to adjudicate the security posture of the products being bought, leaving underfunded, under-resourced public sector organizations with an expanded attack surface and IT staff tasked with not only making it work, but figuring out how to keep it secure make it secure, keep it secure, and monitor for the inevitable attempt to compromise or co-opt that technology. That was not um, a, a good message to deliver, but we need that kind of truth to power. And speaking of organizations that are really good at breaking technology, an IOActive researcher, Ruben Santamarta, has moved his focus to the aviation sector, and the findings do not make people any more comfortable about flying the friendly skies. Um, it would be good to check out the article on this and familiarize yourself a little bit with security in the aviation industry because I think it affects a lot of us. Apache Struts is back and being actively exploited right now. So patch now if you haven't. Um, this is worse than the last go-round. Okay, next topic, privacy, surveillance, uh, and elections because uh, creepy ad tracking has something to do with all of this. So um, <clears throat> Twitter knocked down millions of bot accounts. Um, Facebook took down pages that were spreading all kinds of fake news for the purpose of influencing the weak-minded and predisposed. Um, I think more interestingly, there was some research uh, that followed that up regarding those who are willing to spread what they know is fake. And it's a desire to simply cause chaos. Some people just want the world to burn and you gotta look out for them. Uh, also, this notion of deep fakes or doctored videos are likely to be the next big challenge in countering misinformation. Now you can easily put your favorite politician in a convincing video showing them committing a crime. And that is going to be a lot of fun to argue about in 2019. I look forward to that a lot. Okay, a little bit about uh, government, military, and etc. So um, DHS has come up with um, uh, a new risk center, and Bob Kalaski is heading this up. Bob Kalaski is uh, one of the most effective people at DHS, and he was instrumental in the creation of the NIST cybersecurity framework. Um, that said, um, the conversation between the private sector and Homeland Security is still, please share information with us. No. Uh, that's how it's uh, generally gone, and I think the way it's going to go, um, unless DHS has some secret sauce to uh, convince the private sector that we need to share information and that's going to be insulated, so we'll find out. Um, North Korean operatives have been named now as part of the WannaCry global attack, uh, as part of the Sony attack, um, and frankly, trying to steal billions from global banking. Um, it's not likely that we're going to get a prosecution from this. Um, the message is being sent that we can attribute these attacks uh, until criminal AI is up to speed, and that'll make it harder. But for now, yes, we can identify you. So the warning, I think, is more important than the actual action. Telegram, the encrypted messaging app, uh, was had its traffic all routed through Iran uh, with a, a, a BGP-injected route. Um, 
they were organized, Iranians were organizing uh, protests using Telegram, and so hence the Iranian government wants to man in the middle of that and go to work breaking the encryption. I don't know if that's going to be successful, but again, um, the, the message to people is not, we gotcha, it's that we see you, and the metadata is um, sufficient, really, for them to say, we know who you called. All right, finally, so back to this Iranian thing a little bit, setting aside that BGP injection is an ancient attack that still works. The bigger issue to me are the differences in norms from country to country and what that means. Um, China, for example, has been held up as uh, being in a better position to innovate with big data analysis and technology because they don't have the privacy constraints that most Western countries do. They can do facial recognition and they can give you a, um, a, a goodness identifier based on your unwillingness to protest. Well. Because of those differences, what we're going to end up with are countries that balkanize, even to the extent that they use proprietary operating systems and networking protocols internally. This sets up the, for, the potential for something like treaties. If you want our gateway translator to allow you into our country to do e-business, your country will have to accept the way we approach issues like privacy, surveillance, encryption, and access to technology. We're a long way from there, but this is the new view, I think, of uh, the, a horizon that's starting to emerge. So we'll see how that works out. Again, this is probably years in the making, uh, but this balkanization looks to me is starting to happen. North Korea, they're already balkanized. I'm Mike Hamilton. This is Newsjacker.